Halo, good people of YouTube. Mount Ben here. And I'm starting this one a bit early because look at this matchmaking. Um, ignore the underwater Bismarck, but that's right. Your eyes did not deceive you. There's only nine players in this game. And then there's a tier five battleship in this match. With two CVs, four DDs on one side, three DDs on the other side, one cruiser on the red team, two cruisers on, on the friendly team. I don't know what type of matchmaking this is or when the heck Colorado 747, who by the way this is who we are featuring today, is playing, but good gravy, um, wow, this some real matchmaking right here. <laughs> so Colorado 747 is in the tier 8 German battleship, the Bismarck, one of my favorite ships in the game, a wonderful ship. I don't quite know his build. Uh, I do believe it's a secondary build of minus AFT. I'm not sure uh, how many points he has in this commander, but not quite full secondary build yet, but he's on his way there. So, yeah. This this going to be a match right here. So, wow. I haven't seen match being like this in a long time. I suspect he's playing somewhere around 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, that's the only time I can imagine this type of matchmaking occurring. Or somebody said a matchmaking for five minutes. Actually, no, because they—I th I believe they removed that limitation um, a while ago. I think I'm not sure. Either somebody said in matchmaking for five minutes, or this is just like three o'clock in the morning. So, yeah, nine v nine players. Yeah, this is—I I don't know what to say about this matchmaking. It's—it's—it's it's, it's something I'll tell you. So anyway. Um, Bismarck, 15-inch guns, great secondaries, the best secondaries at Tier 8. So an argument that the Odin has better secondaries because they have more range, but Bismarck has, you know, only 0.3 kilometers fewer range on her secondary guns, and she has more of them than the Odin. Uh, other than that, they perform very very similar. Both have guns that are fully capable of pulling or of, of pinning 32 millimeters of armor, um, in the secondary department at least. Also, the Massachusetts is another contender for the best secondaries at Tier 8, but they don't quite have the pins that the Germans do, even though they are more accurate and a bit quicker firing than the Germans. But Bismarck and Terpitz, best secondaries at Tier 8, in my opinion, at least. Uh, also, 8 15-inch guns. I see they fixed that replay bug where when you were following your shells, it looked like you were having a stroke. Uh, of course, you got a couple overpins on the Bayer. That's a cruiser I haven't seen in a very long time. By our tier 8 premium French cruiser. Pretty good cruiser in my mind. Don't see her whole lot anymore. Anyway, uh, the guns on the Bismarck uh, aren't all that accurate, but they did buff the German dispersion quite some time ago to where they're quite workable now. And we'll see uh, Colorado putting in a good bit of work with these eight, uh, 15 inch guns. I wish the, Colorado, uh, the uh, um, Bismarck had 18 inch guns, I was about to say that. Anyway, uh, Bismarck also has hydroacoustic search, something that her sister, the, her sister, the uh, Turbits does not get, and he's also running Spotter Plane Bismarck. Not sure if he's just unlocked the Bismarck and hasn't quite figured it out yet, but really interesting stuff going on here in, uh, Col in Colorado's Bismarck. Has manual secondaries though, look at that. Did select the Monarch for his secondary guns um, as she comes into range of the 9.4 kilometer uh, secondary guns of the Bismarck with AFT, you can't get them out to 11.3 to 11 kilometers, where they are absolutely great. They're not any less great at 9.6 kilometers, just unfortunately have a little less range. Uh, but anyway, there's the tier 5 Soviet battleship, the Piotr Vilecki. I know I didn't say that right, um, <laughs> but there she is in this match, uh, 12 kilometers away from Colorado. So his secondary smash started firing the Monarch, and Monarch's covered in 32 mm millimeters of armor. So the secondary is just going to town against the Monarch. Um, fighters from the Shokako and the Furious! <laughs> Two CVs, why not? In a game with only nine players. Oh, fantastic matchmaking. Mm, gotta love it. Um, bombs were just dropped on Colorado's head. Oh, hi, Piotr. Broadside on from nine kilometers away. I know you're quite the scourge of tier five, but boy, when you get up to the tier eight, you get smacked like that for 26,000 damage. One salvo, two citadels, three overpins. Starting another fire on the Monarch. There's some more bombs they kind of missed. Uh, I think those are from the Furious because they kind of disobeyed the laws of gravity as they fell, if you will. So Monarch made the choice to stop 
in front of Colorado. Not the wisest choice, uh, but he is having to face up. Oh, never mind. Time to face anything now. His problems are over. <laughs> Five Citadels in about a minute there for Colorado. Uh, he was having to face the Lagosoneri and the Shiriatsu, so he didn't have much to contend with. And I know I said the French cruiser name wrong, but I am of French descent, so I can do that without being ridiculed, hopefully. Anyway, uh, Pyoto Vileki now within the sector range. There's a Shikaku uh, um, torpedo, bo uh, torpedo planes. Now, the thing about the Bismarck is that she does have one of the better AA suites out of the German battleships. Much better than Turpets, for sure. Better than Odin. Uh, so she can actually kind of put up a fight against planes, but um, still not the best AA by any stretch of the imagination, just better AA for the Germans. There goes the Piorto Vilecki with the secondaries getting um, Colorado the second, the close quarters expert, the secondary award there. Um, Furious decided he wants to be an American cruiser and is hugging an island. Oh, there's high caliber too. Boy, Colorado's on one heck of a roll right now. Uh, Furious realizing that that hugging an island is not for him since he is not an American cruiser. And now he's running into an American cruiser of all things. Fierce within, uh, within Colorado's range, letting him have the business of the 15 inch guns there. Shokaku now also in range. Uh, Baltimore finishes off the Furious. Uh, there is the, that, that pesky buyer that I mentioned earlier. Now, ooh, torpedoes. Mm, ah. I can't really fault Colorado there because he did just fire, so, you know, he was spotted, but hey, the DD was spotted in B, and you got Hydroacoustic Search. Probably should have been using that, could have avoided that, but it's done all right so far, and, you know, hey, it's just a boost for the Adrenaline Rush, which I'm not actually sure he has, looking at that reload speed on his main battery guns. I think Benson just derped into an island right there. Did he avoid it? No, he derped right into it. So... After quite the bit of action and racking up 122,000 damage in mm, four minutes-ish of action time, uh, he's now finding himself kind of out in the open, which isn't really where you want to be in um, in a Bismarck. Someone's asking how how the frick am I supposed to kill a Bismarck? Uh, who is that actually? Um, we'll see. We'll find out who that is in a second. That might be one of the DDs. Uh, or the Bayard, who can quite easily kill a Bismarck, or maybe the Carrier, who can... Wow, that was... Wow, you missed that. Who can quite easily kill the Bismarck. Oh, uh, well, Kamikaze. Actually, no, that's not the Carrier, because that's, that's not the Carrier's uh, tag. Anyway, uh, Colorado going for the decap now. Now, the teams are actually surprisingly even, and this is also a surprisingly even game. Uh, both teams are around 400 points. Both teams are four to five ships down. Uh, oh, yeah, the Bayard. How is he asking how to kill a Bismarck? You just burn him, bud. You're a very good uh, HE spammy cruiser. Huh. You, you don't kill him by sitting broadside, though. I, ca I can tell you that. Bayard's not that tough of a cruiser. Uh, Benson just took out the friendly Shiriatsu. And now this Bayard's sitting broadside on from 12 kilometers. Benson also just torpedoed the Queen Elizabeth. Oh, so now it's really awkward with uh, it being Colorado against uh, a Bayard and two Bensons. Hmm. Oh, also there's a defense expert <laughs> for Colorado on top of everything else he's already got in this match. So, uh, good hit there on the Bayard. 9,000 damage. Bayard does not have a heal. If my memory serves me correct, I suspect it does. I don't think it's betrayed me yet. So, um, surprisingly, no fires being set by the Bayard. I'm wondering if he's, for some reason, running IFHE, which would be a very strange choice on the Bayard. Very, very strange indeed. Shokaku coming in again. Uh, I guess he wants to feed him, feed him more planes. Well, granted, he is the only target that the Sh Shokaku can go after, since, well, the other two targets are carriers. Uh, he missed that drop, too. I'm not sure how you miss a Bismarck and a Shokaku, but... That's happening. It's late at night. Chicago players probably tired. Can't can't blame it too much. We've all been there. Uh, that's forty eight planes shot. Forty nine planes shot down now by Colorado's Bismarck. Thirty three seconds left the cap in the cap point. He's maneuvering, trying to throw off the Bayard as much as he can. At least, uh, nope. There we go. Got the reset on him here. Really curious as to how the Bayard hasn't set any fires yet, unless he's just being absolutely screwed by RNG. Now. 
Colorado does have the Bensons to contest with. I'm sorry, the Benson and the Gajimata. Um, who the Gajimata is sitting in smoke over by the implacable that the Benson could easily be hunting. Uh, yeah, probably is easily hunting him down. Although he's being spotted by planes and probably the Bayard. I would have Hydro running right about now. Shokaku, did he drop his torpedoes way back there? Or is he trying to slingshot? Very interesting approach from the Shikaku on Colorado. Um, that's insanely easy to dodge. Now, while Colorado is contesting the decap, that means the enemy team isn't gaining any points on Colorado's team. If he were to leave this cap, they would start to gain points on Colorado's team. But since he's contesting it, the point differential is the same, but the same. Now, the Implacables killed the Gajamata, which is bought. Uh, Colorado's team some more time. He's slowing down here. That's very good. Throwing off the CV's aim and uh, is now turning. I think he's still eating the torpedo, but hey, if you slow down like that, in most instances, you'll throw off the CV's aim a little bit, but CV's still do have, you know, insane control of their plane, so won't do too much, but hey, in some cases it will work. Bayard coming back to within range. Maybe we'll start a fire now. No, God, I wish the Bayards I faced had this trash fire chance. Like, jeez, come on. He's hit him several times and no fires. Uh, Colorado popping a heel now. Oh, Shikaku coming out with dive bombers now. He's unfortunately going to leave the cap area here and is going to allow the enemy team a couple of ticks of, uh, of points. And it looks like the Benson also is going after the Implacable and not the Bismarck. Quite a surprise. Uh, you can see the Implacable has him spotted. Well, not spotted, but he has some planes hovering over him. Uh, Shikaku's coming in with dive bombers now. Still no... F <laughs> and apparently the bio's noticing his lack of fires as well. Um, that's... Wow. Uh, Colorado, whatever you did to get this RNG. Uh, ah, there we go. There's a fire. Um does not have any type of fire prevention because that's almost a 50 second fire suspect this have the flags and the damage con modules though 3000 health left on the buyer there's the he from the benson finally coming in to help out the buyer he now he is also out of heals now that was his last heal and i suspect he is holding this damage con just for you know the instance of him setting uh setting on being set on fire multiple times which uh, is something you definitely want to do when you're in this situation, like we talked about with the Odin video um, a day or two ago. Bayard just almost coming to within uh, secondary range. Put out those two fires there. And what, keep in mind, while damage kind of is running, you will not be able to be set on fire by the enemy team. So for the next three seconds, he's completely immune to fires, and with his Bayard's fire chance, probably pretty safe all in all together. Bayard selling straight back. You never want to do that. You kind of want to be zigzagging stuff to throw off their aim. Oh, there he goes. Turns at the last second. Bounces a 15-inch shell off the rear turret. It's the Bayard's turn to get a little bit of lucky with RNG. Um, Benson torpedoing the Implacable, but the Ryujo is still alive and kicking. I think the uh, Implacable still has a flight of... Tor nope, nope, he's done. He's complete. No, no, he does have a flight of Copper Palmer still out. Byron's no longer firing for some reason. Um, he doesn't exactly have a heal, so he really should just keep trying to set Colorado on fire here here until um, he does eventually catch on fire. Gets one pin. Not enough to kill him, though. But um, I don't know if he pinned his turret or something. Well, he had to because he didn't even get any more damage from that. Now Colorado is going to sit here and just cap at his leisure without having to be worried about setting on fire or anything. Um... Ah, Implacable finishes burning out the Benson. So the question is, what is this Bayard going to do? He doesn't have a heal. He doesn't have a smoke screen or anything that he can uh, do. And Colorado's making the right choice. Here. He's going to sit here. He's going to cap the cap so his team can start to get the points tick advantage. And then he's going to go deal with the Bayard. It's a good call there by Colorado. Gets a solo cap ribbon. That's a very valuable ribbon, my friends. So make sure you cap. Um... And now it's just time to kill the Bayard. <laughs> and now the Ryujo can give him his uh, his assistance too since he is, you know, free from the scourge of the Benson. Um, and it's a very odd choice that, sh that, sh that the Shokaku is now trying to go after the Ryujo when Colorado's at such low health to where, you know, one good, one or two good runs with his AP bombers would finish off the um, Colorado's Bismarck. 
or his torpedoes or his rocket planes or something to just finish off Colorado. Oh, I see why he's doing it now because he's up there with the Ryujo. A Colorado launching his spotter plane. Now, the Bayard does have torpedoes that surprises people a lot, so I, again, would have my Hydro running here. It does seem like um, Colorado has maybe forgotten that he has it, which, again, is why I think maybe he just got done grinding the Gneisen now, and now he's on the Colorado, uh, the, the Colorado, the uh, Bismarck. So, ah, there's the Bayard running for J-10 for some reason. Uh, unfortunately, he does have the wonky... Um, spotter plane aim there and he did spot it using the spotter plane so he's got to wait for that spotter plane to cycle back around to where he will be able to spot the um, Bayard trying to coax the Bayard out in chat um, I don't think the Bayard's really going to go for it really don't know what this Bayard's plan is um, games ending in five minutes if he can manage to run and stay alive for those five minutes uh, actually no no um, Colorado's team got plenty of enough time to catch up on points, so mm, not really sure what he's doing here. And plus, his Shokaku is probably going to go down too. Um, probably would have had just a better chance of running. And oh yeah, my uh, replay system glitched out there for a second. Uh, maybe running or just running and trying to start him on fire. Because if he does get just one or two fires on him, I mean. You never know. He might be able to set one fire, and I would have... There's the hydroacoustic search. You may be able to set one fire, and then Colorado would damage con it, and then set another fire. Again, um, I was making sure my replay, my recording software was still back on. And then I come back to this mess right here, the replay system having an absolute stroke. Um, I guess it doesn't like being uh, tabbed out of in the middle of a, of a game. There's the Bayard, very glitchy, very jerky. There's the Bayard's torpedoes spot launched way too far ahead of Colorado. Nicks the Bayard's about a stern there and manages to take him out. I'm not going to make you watch the rest of it, it's just the carriers killing each other. But there we go. Quite some strange matchmaking there from um, Matchmaker. Colorado did a fantastic job with... I mean, just had an absolutely awesome game, awesome, game, awesome game there. Really showing off the strength and abilities of the Bismarck. So good job, um, Colorado, and thank you for sending that in to the channel. And hope you guys enjoyed watching that. Uh, please, if you did watch, enjoy the video, please uh, leave a comment down below. Make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 15,000 subscribers, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day, and hope to catch you guys in the next one.